Hi. I'm going to start this by saying there's a lot of underlying feelings about what's about to come out of my mouth. And there's not one thing that caused it. Well, that's not true. You know what caused it? This blue t-shirt. This old navy blue fucking t-shirt just caused all of the, what's about to come out of my mouth. You might be asking why did a blue t-shirt cause that? Or what could a blue t-shirt have caused? That shirt used to fit me. That shirt does not fit me now. But it's been in my closet. I don't even want to think about how long it's been in my closet. So every time I go to get ready, there was a chunk of clothes that just I knew didn't fit. But did I get rid of them? No. I, could, I let them sit there. Like this unhealthy fester of thoughts and feelings that just sit in the back of my brain. It just sat in the corner of my closet. Just sitting there. You know, not being an obstacle and getting something to wear. There's plenty of stuff on the right hand side. Plenty of stuff before it, but I would have to look at it. I would grab something and I would I, I would see it. Like it's like that shirt was a reminder that you used to be that size. That shirt used to fit you, but now you have to go look over here. Now you have to grab everything else in your closet. But this shirt, and it's not just this shirt, I have a whole half of a closet full of clothes that I used to keep as gold clothes. And gold clothes are great. You know, when you have a shirt or like you're shopping and you're on this journey of being healthier and and having, not even having the body you want, loving the body you're in. And you think, you know what? That is an obtainable piece of clothing. I should get that. But then you keep going. Okay. Um, you know, let's say you buy two sizes too small and you think, well, if I hit the next size and I already own this. And then all of a sudden you're buying clothes that probably like would never fit you because your bone structure is bigger than that because you're physically not structured for that to be your size i own pants that were a size 32 and in men's that's not that small it's not that big it's like a medium size actually it's not it's realistically not a medium size because i think the smallest it gets is 28 so i was probably rocking a size 36, a size 38, which for me at the time was a big size. I had to get the husky size. I had to get the the chunky kid clothes, the fucking, the, the extended size jeans, the, you know, and buy the bigger clothes. And it was, it felt like this big shameful thing. And maybe if it didn't feel that shameful, maybe if it was just known that like, okay, you're not getting the smallest size, you're getting the bigger size. So what? So fucking what? Why does it matter? Why do we have plus size clothing? Why don't we just have clothing? Why don't why do we have big and tall? Why don't we just have fucking sizes? Like why? Why? And then it makes me think that maybe if I wasn't conditioned in the societal way that we all are, Maybe I wouldn't have felt like shit. Maybe I wouldn't have compared myself to everybody else. Maybe I wouldn't have wished I looked a different way. Maybe I would have loved the way I looked and I would have just been that. But then I also know that if I haven't been through what I've been through, felt the feelings that I've felt, known the things about myself that I know, I wouldn't be me. So even on my best days, when I wish like hell, that I could have just loved myself, I have to remember that I wouldn't be the person that I am. I wouldn't have the brain that I have, the feelings I have, the heart that I have if I didn't love myself. And how fucked in the head is that? That I have to understand that me not loving myself is why I am who I am. And I know that this, maybe this won't resonate with many people. Maybe this will resonate with one person. But if this one person can hear the words coming out of my mouth and not, and change what, they're, what they could possibly do, because if I wouldn't have felt the way I felt about myself, if I wouldn't have been told that I was fat and that I was, you know, I was chunky and that I was overweight and that my body mass index was too high, if I wouldn't have been told those things, if I wouldn't have been made shameful for getting a size that wasn't a medium or a small, if all of those things wouldn't have been what they were, would I, I wouldn't have done the other things that I did. I wouldn't have chosen to do a diet 
that was probably so terrible for my health that probably to this day caused the eating disorder problem that I have that wouldn't have made me villainize a whole group of food to the point where I'd want to binge eat it. Maybe, maybe it's a great thing. Maybe it's a wonderful thing to sit here and just wonder and question and think about because maybe, and then what if? The world is just so infinite and vast and thinking of all those things is so stressful and it's, even though what I'm doing isn't positive because why am I not focusing on the now and pushing to love myself? I know that I should love myself to the, the most capacity, to the highest and most, most, most intense way. I should love every inch, every cell of my body and know that it doesn't matter how many layers of epidermis, what my body mass index is, how much fat is on my body, the number and the size within these cotton chunks that it's on the inside that matters. And I used to wonder, oh my god, I had crushes. And I would crush on people that I was was taught that weren't in my leap, that, that would never love me. And I used to wonder, if I didn't look the way I did, maybe he'd like me. That was a huge encouragement for some of my diets that were so unhealthy. Fucking Adkins was the worst. So I would do what I wanted to do, and I would eat the way I ate, and I would try, and I would look at a number on a scale and think, no, that's not enough, that's not enough, that's not enough. And then I would wonder, well, maybe, maybe next week he'll like me because I'll weigh five pounds less. Maybe next month he'll like me because hopefully I lose more and more and more and I didn't have an end goal. There was no end goal. The end goal was until, until what? A doctor told me I was, I, it was good? Until, until what? When was the end? When was the limit to how low I wanted my weight to get? I couldn't tell you because I, I didn't know what was okay. I didn't have someone telling me, well, if you weigh this specific amount, it's fine. Or if you look this way, or if this is the size clothing you're in, that's the acceptable number. So now, here I am with a closet full of clothes that the world would say are too big, or for someone who is just, who is way overweight, for someone who, who, who should be ashamed of themselves. I've got this closet full of clothes that I was ashamed in purchasing. Because for a while, I wasn't convinced that I could have cute clothes because they didn't make anything that's cute in my sizes. So then the sizes went up, and then what? Then you wonder. Why is it a crime to be fat and fat and look nice? Because all the clothes, as they get bigger, they get frumpier. No one imagines that you could have shape. No one wants something to, to flatter an area and then hide another and just make you look and feel so wonderful. And then, then I started to buy women's plus size clothing. And let me tell you, that was the biggest, most confident boosting thing that I could have ever done. Because I'm going to pull them out. There's things in front of me that I would have never thought would look right on me. Um, this is a pair of pink, like, jeans. Those pants have brought me so much confidence. They've made me feel so good. They've made, they've given me so many compliments. They've, they've just made me feel a way that clothing has never made me feel. And there are women's plus size item following with these pants. They're jeans. My entire life, I thought I hated jeans because I didn't like the frumpy, straight leg, heavy number, the men's jeans. I hated men's jeans, and if it wasn't for that experience that I had with them, and not knowing that I could have a skinny jean because the skinny jeans didn't go that big. Well, guess what? Women's jeans go to any size, and they hug every ounce of your body, and they make you feel so slim because you're not wearing clothes that are boxy and that that hang off of your body this pair of sweatpants from target two pairs they go up and they hug my hips where i want my hips to be hugged and they just make me feel so confident and i'm not saying go buy women's clothing for fuck's sake what i'm saying is don't limit yourself to to one item or one gender clothing because someone told you that that's what you should wear this whole video is a mess this is the weirdest stream of consciousness ass video. I don't even know what the point is. The point is I'm angry. This blue shirt pissed me off royally because 
it's not my size and for some reason it's still in my closet and for some reason I look at it every time that I go to get ready and it's just a little thought in the back of my head of that used to fit you why doesn't it when I should look at all these clothes and think wow you look so good in the pink pants those jeans make you feel so confident those sweatpants those jogger velvet sweatpants make you feel like you are worth a million dollars but no I sit here and I look at clothes that make me feel like shit so gold clothes as nice as they can be they're so toxic because guess what I could lose all of the weight that shouldn't medically be on my body and guess what will still fit me all the clothes that are currently in my closet and if they hang off of me guess what I'll get new ones and no, it wasn't a fine. It's not a financial option all the time to just go buy new clothing. So I'll take it, get it fucking altered. I'll, or I'll just wear it. I'll wear it knowing it doesn't fit me and knowing that I'm not that size, but knowing that it made me feel confident. It made me. It just made me happy. So the message of this is: love yourself, no matter what, no matter who tells you you shouldn't, no matter who puts you down. Because guess what? If someone puts you down for any aspect of you it is because they are so envious that you are you are expressing yourself in that way when you decide to be unapologetically yourself and know that a hate comment or someone talking about you or saying something about your appearance or anything about you that is out of not even out of your control. The fact that someone would have the audacity to comment on anything about you without having a second to know what's in your head is is irrelevant. Because as long as you know you are being truly unapologetic, unapologetically yourself, what does it matter? I have a parental figure who has bullied me for years because I am this feminine guy. Because I am this freak woman wannabe. Because I'm this little faggot bitch boy. And guess what? I slap my eyebrows on with confidence. I wing my eyeliner. I cake my face. I overdraw my lips and I don't give a fuck. So don't give a fuck. Don't give anyone the power to alter or belittle or make you feel less than what you know that you are. Nobody has that power unless you give them that power. And the day you choose to stop giving them that power is, it's so freeing because what? So what, you feel that way? I'm so sorry that your brain is wired in such a negative way that you felt that that feeling could affect me. I feel like I should stop ranting and raving. Wow, thanks for this TED talk.